What's up guys, this is Kyle from Wax Museum and I've got a few pieces of mail I want to share with you today including this uh, mummified atrocity here. I'll save that for the end but um, yeah, kind of an interesting story that goes along with that one. But first let's go ahead and dig into some of the, I think both of these are going to be binder cards if they are the cards that I'm thinking of. So yeah, so this one, oof. All it takes, we just need a little bit something over that to keep that card from coming out of there and that top getting damaged, which I don't think it did. But anyway, this is a card uh, or a listing that uh, Wade underscore Zoe sent my way. And um, it's a pretty reasonable price, although let's see with that top. I don't think it got damaged. I think that's just the way the top edge would normally be. But anyway, this is the 2012-2013 um, Elite Aspirations Parallel. I'm sorry, this is the, the Status Parallel. Um, so the Status was numbered to the player's jersey number. The Aspirations then was the difference uh, out of 100. So this is the David West here. But the thing that I like the most about, well, several things, but the thing that I like most about this is the numbering. So I always try to get... For the status parallel, I always try to get the last one. So in this case, it was 21 out of 21. So um, to find that all these years later, you know, this, this card's been out a decade, so that's pretty cool. Uh, fun fact, this picture is from a game that I was at in Orlando. It was a playoff game, so uh, that makes it even better for me. So definitely happy to add that one to the PC. That will go in the binder. Although on this one, I'm torn. Do I, does it go with the status cards or does it go with the uh, page of, of cards of games that I've been to. I think it goes in the status cards. If I need to get another copy for the other page, I can do that. All right. Binder problems, right? You never know how to organize things because things could go on so many different pages. Well, I know if this, well, if this is what I think it is, I know exactly what page it's going to go on. And we got a, a mailer inside a mailer. So let me cut that open real quick. And this I bought off of somebody on Instagram. I saw this card listed in a set chase they were doing, I don't know, maybe a couple months ago. And I just reached out to him and said, hey, if you ever break this setup, I'm interested in, you know, the card that I ended up getting here. And lo and behold, they, they messaged me not too long ago and said, hey, I'm, I'm breaking that setup. Is this still something that you're interested in? And we came to a pretty easy deal. So it just goes to show if you if you do see something like that, don't be afraid to reach out. The worst they can say is no. Uh, and in some cases, it will work out. And this is a 2014 uh, Damo is actually how uh, they pronounced his name. Or maybe that was a nickname when he was in Indiana. Damo Rudez. Prism Gold. Um, and I didn't know that was coming in a one touch, so that's nice. Although that is, that will end up in the binder, but man, that 2014 stuff looks so good. I don't see too many of those pop up anymore. So very happy. Two great binder cards in that mail day, but uh, we are not done. This next one, definitely not a binder card. This was a $15 lot that I bought off someone. I actually bought two different $15 lots off of them in the same night. I uh, didn't realize it though, so I, I, I paid separately and they shipped them separately. One of them showed up like this, this whole just mummified package here with the package label. Um, it, it had packing tape on it, but it was just barely hanging on. I mean, I, I'm surprised it even got here. The second package I saw got hung up uh, somewhere in Florida, several hours from my house. So um, that gave me a pretty good indication that it was also wrapped mummified and that label came off of that so I, I reached out to the seller and he's been pretty cool about it and, and he's working with me to try to get that package but I think that other one is long gone but anyway this one I've already opened but I put this stuff back in there just to show you how it was packaged and of course now I can't get it out of here very easily so this like I said I won this for about 15 bucks so you know you're looking at a little bit under four dollars a card nothing groundbreaking here nothing earth shattering but uh, we got this Kevin Garnett, 95 Collector's Choice, uh, CSG 8.5 Rookie. So that, you know, that that's at most is probably $10 at a show. Um, this one here, I think, might have a little bit of value if I'm patient with it. 
It's a Sports Illustrated for Kids Lynn St. James uh, autograph in a Beckett slab. And I, I am pretty familiar with Lynn St. James just because I grew up watching the Indy 500 and she competed in that multiple times. So, um, you know, it's not one that I can just go out and, and probably sell real quick, but it's one that eventually will, um, I don't know, I'm thinking maybe even, maybe in the $30 range is what I'm thinking, which, you know, that would be great. That would be double the price of the lot. Uh, then we got a vintage card here. This is a uh, 1969 Royal Star Rookie. So all sorts of uh, four different sports in this lot here. And uh, this is not worth a whole lot. But the one thing I do want to show you here that I like about that global um, holder or that label. It's going to be hard to see it here. I'll try and focus in. Look at the top of that. So they tell you the, the year the card set. Um, and if it was an actual listed as on the checklist as a player, they'd show you that and then the grade. So if you're sorting these in a box and you've got those all to where they're pointing up, that's something that's pretty cool. I wish PSA and some of these other companies would adopt that, but we're probably too late in the game for them to make any major changes like that. But uh, great new grading companies, if you are out there and you're listening, that's something that Global did that I think worked really well. Um, I don't know. Maybe you guys liked it. Maybe you didn't. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. And then the final card here. This is junk. Um, you know, it's a Deshaun Hamilton red, white, blue prism. So that's one of those lots I'm not going to get rich on. But if, if I can uh, make a little bit off of it and add to my show inventory at the same time, it would be great. Uh, it would have been even better if the other cards had shown up because I thought that lot was even better. But uh, the seller's being cooperative about it, and it is what it is. So anyway, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that. I try to give you my mindset whenever I'm buying lots and, and um, give you some insight into what I'm thinking. Remember, there are new episodes of the audio podcast that come out every Thursday. And as always, thanks for watching. And don't ship your packages mummified with blue painter's tape. Lesson of the day. Thanks for watching. <laughs>